We would like to take a few moments to go over with you a little history of Pub Monique and Stillwater. In 1837, treaties were signed with the government and local Ojibwa and Sioux Dakota nations to allow settlement into the St. Croix Valley. Stillwater was incorporated in 1854 and soon became a booming town and it flourished in the lumber industry until 1914 when the industry faded out. Today's investigation is Pub Monique, but what do we really know about this building's history? In 1883, it was run by George Rogantine as a barber shop and a bathhouse. In 1890, it became a billiard hall, wine room, and cigar shop called The New Idea, run by P.S. Dershik. In 1910, it was the Grand Theater for a short time. And then in 1912, the famous Stillwater photographer John Runk had a store there until 1919. This building has been mainly several different bars and restaurants throughout the years, with all this great history, we were able to capture a lot of great evidence, so let's get on with the show. <laughs> Welcome to St. Croix Paranormal's TV show. I'm Jill. I'm Steve. I'm Krista. Today we're going to talk about our visit to Pub Monique in downtown Stillwater. We've actually been there twice, so this show is going to be a two-parter, so what we found on the first visit, what we found on the second visit. The first visit, um, we got, did get quite a few orb pictures, and we got a really crazy picture of a man's face in the window. Um, that particular picture I had taken of a orb that was just kind of floating by the window when I, there was like a reflection in the back of the window when I was reviewing that picture and I felt there was something in there so I zoomed in on it and lo and behold we have a picture of a gentleman, looks like a gentleman from the old 18-1900s. We to this day don't know who he is but we'll show you those pictures now. One more instance that we had, uh, Pope Monique is three levels and the very, very basement is the old 1800s brickwork, masonry, um, concrete, and it, it, there's always like a stream of water running through, so it, you know, the theory is, you know, active water helps, you know, stir up the spirits or they're, you know, enticed by that, but uh, the fluctuations, electromagnetic fluctuations, they were very sporadic all over the different parts of the basement and if you, you know you can always debunk because it's old cast iron or it, it, somebody could have used it for a ground source and it's all the original old piping from the 1880s um, I was checking the meter all the way across and it's not just the piping that the issue was it's just randomly spread through, through there and, you know I tried to debunk it using it on all the appliances the light bulbs and what have you but for some reason, it's just it's too variable from one end of the basement to the other end of the basement, and I find it, you know, if the base is at zero or point one or whatever, you know, you can pretty much write that off. But when you're going into the twos, threes, and four point oh's, you may want to start uh, debunking that kind of an issue too down there. 
Yeah, because you had quite a few different fluctuations on your readings, you were saying, and, and I think you even said you heard a growl down there. There was a growl. We did not yes. capture that on the EVP, no. unfortunately, because the coolers in the basement are very loud, but uh, they were very loud. <laughs> we did get some good stuff there. or we're showing a picture, um, you're not going to get that every time you go somewhere. So we are just showing you some of the interesting anomalies we had found at the bar. Whether it's for sure a ghost, not a ghost, we don't know, everything's theory, but we found it interesting enough to bring it to you. Sitting here. Okay, just like this. I'm not moving. Nobody's moving. Nothing's going on. And all of a sudden, it started sliding that way. Oh, yeah? It opened that much. That was completely closed. And I'm Did watching it. Did you get it, it. Film? No. no, I got no camera. <laughs> I'm like, I was just sitting here, and I'm watching this thing. And it's just sliding, and it slides again. And it got that far. And then, that's it. It opened that far. It was awesome. We're getting nothing. We did get uh, one EVP while we were there, and that was, I was sitting at the bar, just getting ready to do a spirit box session. Steve came up from down in the basement. Me and him had a little bit chit-chat conversation as he walked away. You could hear something whisper into my head camera that I had on, and it picked up a whisper. To me, it kind of sounded like something, something about the window, because actually Steve and I had been having a conversation about it. I had just been to the window, where the supposed woman was thrown out, and then we caught that whisper. So why don't we take a look at that clip? Walking 
I know there's a lady here. I know there's a lady here. So I tended to look over this way. When I looked over that way, I saw the shadow figure going across, and I assumed it was Dan, so I turned and I looked away. And that's what I saw. What did you see when you were here, Krista? A similar experience. We saw Dan, saw a black figure walking past the window over there, assumed it was Dan, so didn't pay attention. Um, when we went back and reviewed the video. We um, saw Dan was not over there, and it's a, a shadow figure. So. Maybe we'll catch up again tonight. Yeah, John and I were talking to the bar owner about different things. Steve um, echoed up in the back saying that he had seen something. Can you tell us what you see? Yes, actually in the very peak corner, kind of, you know, three, four feet away from where we thought we heard that girl's voice that we were talking about. And uh, it looked like a very bright ball of light. It came out kind of went into a crack or a, a hole into the wall, which is the original, you know, more masonry again. It came out of the wall, it kind of changed shape, went along the wall, and then disappeared right back into the wall. It was very interesting. Did I have it on camera? I do not have it on camera. I don't even think what I picked up by the camera because of how the light played in there. And it was just another one of those really cool things that you can experience, but no proof of I actually saw it. Yeah, <laughs> but we'll take a look at that clip so we can kind of get a little experience on uh, how Steve was feeling at that time. <laughs> okay. Sitting on a chair over there. And something caught my eye up in that corner. Mm -hmm. There's nooks and crannies and a plasma orb came out. It looked like it crawled on the wall and disappeared. And when I got up and I shoved this up that way, it was a 7.4. Mm -hmm. And then there was a smell of like chick perfume. No sh**. <laughs> believe it. I mean, it was a 7.4 as high as I could reach it. Well, something so far we've got something about, I didn't catch the first word, but it says something whole truth. So maybe she wants to tell the truth of what happened to her. Well, that's good. Okay. So I was filming for most of the time, and so Steve was behind the bar on the upper level, and so I was filming him walking back and forth, and all of a sudden um, he saw something, and can you tell us what that was? I think I saw another shadow figure. It was behind the bar, and I was looking, and I thought there was somebody standing behind me. I thought I lost track of where Jill was at this time, so I thought Jill was coming back behind the bar. And I was way, way in the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was stuck because it was a black figure coming in. It's dark, and I thought 
this must be Jill. And it got up close and it was just gone. I mean, it was right gone. And, and then you I just stopped. I go, wow. Neither one of you guys were behind me, huh? Because I just saw. Well, she was the other car and I was yep. way in the corner. And We'll take a look at that clip because you'll even hear me say, I don't even know where Steve is because it's so dark, I asked where yep. he was. So why don't we take a look at that? There was just a shadow right there. And I don't think either one of you show up on this wall. Where are you? In the bar. In the bar. Oh. It just, idea. it startled me. It's like, I'm looking here, I can see me, and there was somebody right here. I got electric, that's why I look like, what the hell? That was a close one. We did get a few more ore pictures, actually a lot more than we had gotten the last time, so we'll take a look at those pictures as well. out of Pub Monique. Did not get a shadow figure on our second time out. Uh, most of them, uh, Steve's got to be the lucky one and got him on most of his EVP. Most of your personal one, was it? Or? Always a personal one. That's a key to all you ghost hunters out there. <laughs> Always have a clip-on digital voice recorder on you from the moment you get to the site to the minute you leave because you just never know what you're going to catch or when you're going to catch it. That's right. So let me start by the EVPs that we caught. First off, we do have a man. Um, this was all on the second floor. We have a man say hello. You know, pretty nice, plain, plain Jane. And you know, it is what it is. You just you just don't know what you're gonna catch. Um, and then there's a very interesting thing. We do have. We caught it. What it says, we do not know. Me and Jill were upstairs on the second floor by the window where we did see the black apparition last time. And we were just talking and asking questions, and all of a sudden, from the very high peak in the rafter, was a woman talking in response to what we were saying. 
four or five digital voice recorders, cameras, and everything caught the voice, but it's too low and not clear enough for us to decipher what it said, no matter what Right, we and it's very, very short speaking, but it almost sounded like a two-word. Because I remember standing there, I could hear it behind me. I just heard the, the words, two words behind me, and we both said at the same time, did you just hear that yep. voice? You were down on the second floor, yep. not speaking, and we were the only three in the building, so that never came from anyone right. else. So we'll take a look at that clip. So unfortunately, you can't quite catch the voice, but it's kind of exciting to see how we see it, hear it, and react. So why don't we take a look at that? Are you here? Give us a sign. Will you make some kind of noise? It's just us now. One on one with you. Did you hear that? Voice. A woman's voice. Give us a sign. You make some kind of noise? It's just us now. One on one with you. Did you hear that? I heard a voice. A woman's voice. I heard something, but I didn't catch. I heard it. I heard it. You get it on review. Yeah. I heard it. from Pub Monique number two would be just this random moan. Uh, me and Jill were investigating the lower basement of the uh, Pub Monique and this time we do have a woman's voice moan. It's very faint, very quick, it's only about a second long, but it was notable that we did have recorded it put it forth for evidence. And they have reports of women's, a sound of a woman screaming coming from the basement as well, so that would also make sense. Not that she was screaming, but it was a moan and who knows why she was doing that. I just heard a man's voice behind me. It's like real faint. Like it was coming from upstairs almost. No, I did. I was sitting here facing you just shooting pictures and I heard like a two word, but from, it was from far away, but it came from behind me. I see nothing. It must be the way I'm looking at it. I just... I mean, it was fast. Well, that's how it was when I saw it. It moved quick. It was to the right of the floor 
like that I thought. And it was a... It was like I thought, I caught it, and who knows what I Maybe it don't want to get on our... Sure. We'd like to take the opportunity to show you some of our equipment. It'll help you understand what it is and why we use what we use. So now it's time for a little segment we'd like to call Paranormal Tools. Today we'll be discussing the laser light grid. It comes as a laser in a pattern that you may see demonstrated here. This is the pattern we choose the best because, as you can see, the laser pattern is very close together, so the shadow people or apparitions that you might film are going to be seen. Let me show you one little demonstration. You can see how it blocks out a portion of the lights. Do this boy. <laughs> now you can see you could, you could almost sneak through where you're not going to dissipate all the lights and then you get for catching any shadow people or apparitions. This is just one excellent tool in ghost hunting. Um, well, that's our show for today. Thanks for joining us, and uh, definitely go check out Pub Monique because they rock. <laughs> and Facebook, St. Croix Paranormal. Do it.